Welcome to Real Tennis Talk, Las Vegas number one tennis podcast. Yes, hello. This is Andre speaking. Ah, uh, yes, hello there, Mr. Andre. My name is Ricardo, and I'm calling to see if I could interest you in a free cruise for you and your loved ones. We're in the middle of dinner. Hindrance. Real Tennis Talk 2019 ITF Rules of Tennis. Tennis rules? You're damn right it does. There's not that many rules, but the rules are important because if you want to take advantage of every aspect of this tennis game that you can to get an edge over your opponent, well, baby, the rule book is your book. Let's take a closer look. Today, we're going to flip open the rule book to chapter 26, where we cover a section of the rules known as a hindrance. Here's the definition of hindrance according to the ITF 2019 Rules of Tennis. If a player is hindered in playing the point by a deliberate act of the opponent, well then that player shall win the point. However, the point shall be replayed if the same player is hindered in playing the same point, but this time it's an unintentional act of the opponent or something outside the player's own control. In that case, you get a replay. Here's a few more examples of a hindrance. Would an unintentional double hit be a hindrance? No. An unintentional double hit is not a hindrance It's just something that you are not expecting to see. It may have hindered you, but that's due to your limited awareness. It has nothing to do with the other player, particularly because it was unintentional. Next, a player claims to stop play because the player thought that the opponent was being hindered. They were concerned about the other guy. Is this a hindrance? It is not a hindrance. If you stop play because you think your opponent is being hindered, you lose the point. Really the epitome of the old saying, nice guys finish last. Number three, let's say a ball in play hits a bird. Ka, ka, ka. Flying over the court. Is a ball hitting a bird flying over the court a hindrance, Andre? You got them right it is. Let's take a look at some more examples of hindrance. Talking when the ball is in play. First of all, singles players shouldn't be talking during the points. You could have a mental dialogue with yourself. That's cool. Just don't say anything. In doubles, there's a distinction made. When the ball's traveling towards you, you can talk away. But when the ball's traveling away from you, you can't say anything. The reason why is because when the ball's coming towards you, there is a, we'll call it a tennis reason to speak. You might say switch. You might say, I go, you go, stay left, stay right, bounce, no hit. When the ball's traveling away from you, all there is for you to do is act. Predetermined tactics should dictate your communication. Talking when it interferes with your opponent's ability to play a ball, that's a hindrance. Here's a quick example. You're playing doubles, you hit a very weak lob and you're at the net with your partner. So because you like your partner and don't want to see him murdered by an overhead, you shout, get back to the baseline. Your Arnold Schwarzenegger like yell, of course it distracts your opponent who's a huge fan of his and they're about to hit the balls. Your opponent in that case can easily claim the point based on the fact that you made a deliberate hindrance. Ball was traveling away from you, you can't talk. Here's one of my favorite examples. What if your opponent starts moving around a lot while the ball's in play? Like fake poaches, fainting left, fainting right. They can change position anytime. 
even when the server's tossing the ball or in their motion. The only limit is that they can't make any movement where the purpose is solely or principally to distract the opponent. If they're doing something that doesn't fit into the context of tennis, seemingly no value in terms of a tennis move, and it's distracting to you, it's probably a hindrance. Bird funeral to follow. Example number four. In doubles, let's say my opponents are standing somewhere weird, unusual. Maybe they're even right up next to the service court box where I'm trying to serve it into. I feel totally distracted by their court position. So that's a hindrance, right? Decision, no. Reason why is because the server's partner, the receiver's partner, they can take any position on their side of the net, in or out of the court, doesn't matter. If that player is creating a hindrance to the opponent, the way to determine if their court position is a hindrance to you is to determine the reason for their court position because that is the deciding factor. If the number one reason for their court position is in order to distract the server or the returner, then it's considered an intentional move and a hindrance, therefore. If the number one reason for the court position is to gain an advantage, a tennis advantage, not including distracting the server or returner, then it's actually allowed. That's one of the few areas in tennis where you have a gray area where in review, it's never clear what the actual correct call should have been in that regard. And you'd have to know what their actual intentions were. It's, it's just odd. It's a weird aspect of tennis, but there it is. Thanks again to the ITF for coming up with the 2019 Rules of Tennis. Without you, we could not exist. And thanks again for listening, guys. Real Tennis Talk. Tennis Rules. But, 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 boom, yeah.